Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. So I would like to welcome our very special guest today, Jill Salzman. Jill is, I have so much to share about Jill. Number one, I feel feel like we're definitely sisters from another mister. Um, If you go look at her LinkedIn profile, she looks like a crazy woman like me. Today, she looks pretty normal, but I can already tell that she is a crazy woman. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> from just a little bit of conversation and I love people that are like that really fun people and Jill you're giving off that vi- that vibe so we're going to have a lot of fun here today and before we jump into learning more about Jill and everything she's sharing with the world I just want to tell you her professional bio so Jill is currently growing her third entrepreneurial venture the founding moms And that is where mom entrepreneurs learn to build better businesses. And I love the BBB words, all that alliteration. Build better businesses. She is also a graduate of Brown University and law school. Overachieve much? And (laughs) yes, we can all tell she is an overachiever. She also started a music management firm and then launched and sold a baby jewelry company before creating her current venture. Because she didn't do enough yet, I have many other things to share with you that she's done. She's also the author of two books, and I absolutely love the name of both of them. The first one is The Best Business Book in the World. Woo! <laughs> and the second one, which is a bestseller, is Found It, A Field Guide for Mom Entrepreneurs. What a wonderful title. Thank you. Jill is also the host, because she hasn't had enough to do yet, of the top-rated entertaining business podcast, Why Are We Shouting? Oh my gosh, I love that. I spend my entire life feeling like I'm shouting. Mm-hmm. Um, she gave her own TED Talk on 11-11-11, and I believe that means something, all those 11s. Do you know what that I means? Don't. No, I'm going to have to look that up when we get off because I'm pretty sure there is like angels or something. Um, Okay. Okay. I'll bet there are people listening right now going, I know what it means. And if you do, go ahead, post in the comments, let us know. Um, She was dubbed a mommy mogul by CNN Money, a cool mom entrepreneur we love by MSN Live, and was recently named one of the top 50 women to watch in tech as well as a top 100 champion small business influencers after Forbes named the founding moms one of the top 10 best websites for entrepreneurs. I, I'm tired just reading this. I don't I know how you've done it all. <laughs> She's also shared the speaker stage with, get ready for this, Richard Branson, Cheryl Sandberg, Damon John, Mary Lou Henner, and Desmond Tutu. And she regularly appears on ABC 7's Windy City Live TV show. Now, here's the funniest line of her entire bio. In her spare time, (laughs) Jill enjoys cloofing, baking, and erasing her daughter's crayon artwork from the kitchen walls. Now, you might have thought, well, did Kathy just say a word incorrectly? No, I did not. I have never heard of cloofing. So, Jill, let's start by you telling us, what is cloofing? You know, in high school, someone said to us as a class, if you are putting your resume together, find something that nobody knows so that it becomes the conversation starter and it's an easier way into an interview. And ever since then, I've put this in there because halfway through college, I went and I lived in South Africa for a little while. And in South Africa, they speak Afrikaans and uh, the word kloofing is Afrikaans for cliff jumping. So they usually go out and they climb mountains for about five hours, find a ledge, jump into a pool of water, 
get out of the water, go to another ledge, and you basically jump down the mountain uh, off of cliffs into water. And I don't actually remember why I put it in as something I enjoy doing, because I didn't <laughs> want to I will never be doing it again. Uh, but you did do it once. Oh, I sure did. That's how I learned that uh, it is not for me. It is really... Uh, Loofing. Loofing. It is, it's sort of like, you know, the... The poor man skydiving without a, what is it? A balloon, an umbrella, whatever they come down with. Yeah. It's yeah. not an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. But, you know, but they don't even have an umbrella when they cloof. When no, they cloof, they don't even have an umbrella. My no, God, at least give it an umbrella. <laughs> yeah, no. mm -mm. nothing, nothing. Wow. Do you have any pictures to prove that you did that? I don't. I don't. Oh, see, I have a not believing you now. Not believing you. Mind, <laughs> in the mind of lots of people being airlifted out of the area that day. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Not, Seriously? Not, not for you? Were they no. really? No. Oh, there's no way. No, I'm afraid of heights. There not is no way I would ever do that. That way. Yeah. yeah. But I need to tell my husband because he loves to jump off of high things. He would yeah. love it. He should go clue Yeah, he would. He would really love. And he also loves to dive and he loves water and all that. So I'll be telling my husband that. That's great. Okay. Baking. What do you like to bake? Uh, who doesn't like to bake a chocolate chip cookie? It's the best thing mm, ever. I only like to eat them. I don't really care about baking. <laughs> oh, and I don't even So we'd be a good dough. partners. You yeah, could bake I them. I could eat them. I don't like cookie dough either. So if you're a cookie dough fan, come with me because oh, I don't like no, it. No, I don't like cookie no, dough. Yeah. I don't either. I don't want the, I don't want it raw. No. I, I understand a lot of people love it, you know, but no, I don't even like cookie dough ice cream or anything. Mm. So I think we're supposed to be talking about business here. Probably. Probably. Hey, you know what? This is my podcast. I get to do whatever I want. Amen. <laughs> so Jill, tell us a little bit about your journey because I, you, you have done a lot. So yeah, I sure have. I sure out of college, have. what made you decide to, I mean, did you, did you do any law or did you just jump right into the music management firm? No, I went, well, prior to going to law school, I worked in the music business for a year or, or two years um, at a record label, went to law school, worked in an office for two weeks, watched the lawyer I worked for play solitaire every day, all day, and realized I can't do this. I can't be stuck in an office working for somebody else. So it was a two week stint and then I never practiced law again. Uh, I launched pretty quickly after that, going back to my music business roots. Um, and I decided I was gonna help bands not go the music label route that I had experienced and instead help Oh, them so you, you actually have a record of your own? Is that what uh, they call you know that? No, that was always the dream. No, no, no. I mean, I watched a lot of people come through the label and get screwed by the label. So uh, I thought, you know, what if you okay, have a long it. career in music, you have yeah. to skip the record label and focus on touring, bands, uh, merch. So I did that and I sent bands on tour for years and I would try to get them to make a good living without getting sucked into corporate. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was great. It was great. I loved it. It's wonderful that you helped people like that who are so artistic. They mm -hmm. don't really usually have that business side. They don't want to understand that business side. So they do get uh, abused oh. in that way often. So and That's that right. is such a wonderful thing. Yeah, I called it paperwork media to say, hey, if you focus on your music. I'll focus on the paperwork because you don't know what you're doing. And, uh, and we'll... Yeah. Some solid dough that way, you know. Yeah. But I did cool. that. And during that six year period that I ran that biz, um, I started a second business. And I, about two years in, I had my first daughter who received a little pair of sterling silver anklets with bells on them from some cousins, some family I have in Thailand. They shipped it out. They said, Congrats. I slipped these little anklets on her ankles. And I got compliments wherever we went. So I thought, wow. why don't I import these and see if I can sell them here? Because I can't find them here. Uh, uh, and I did. And uh. I started selling those and taking what I learned of marketing and branding and sales from my first biz and applying it to the second biz. And ran uh -huh. two companies at the same time for uh, four years, which can drive a woman. That's a long time to run two companies. 
It was yes. really crazy and yes. I learned a lot and I learned that I hated selling products. So as I was winding mm -hmm. down the baby jewelry business, uh, I was desperately searching for a fellow mom entrepreneur who might know how to run two businesses at the same time. And I was pregnant with my second kid. So I thought, oh, how am wow. I going to do this with two babies? So yeah. I opened up a meetup on meetup.com, if you know the site. And I oh, yeah. invited anybody who had a business and a baby, can you please come and meet with me and tell me how you're not losing your mind? Uh, and I had no idea that it would be so well received and so many women would show up to the first meeting. And about six months in, somebody said, could you open up a second chapter? I don't want to drive all the way here from the big city. <laughs> and I... Uh -huh. She was really lazy because we weren't that far from the big city, but I sort of had my light bulb moment and I thought, wait a second, it's the internet. I can open up a city anywhere. So right. uh, I sort of took off and I closed up the music management business and I sold the baby jewelry business because it felt like something bigger than I had ever imagined I would do it. Already I knew it would be something good. So I chased it and I listened to my members as they attended and what did you need? What do you want to hear about? What do you want to learn? And we're 10 years later, we're in loads of cities around the world. We have an online community now that we launched five-ish years ago. Uh, and so we have online and offline resources for any mom entrepreneur who wants to build a better business there for your alliteration right. needs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I love it. I that love is it. fabulous. Yeah, I love it. So a couple of questions um, from yeah. things that you mentioned. What was it about selling product that you didn't enjoy? For oh, anybody that's like thinking about doing that, what do they need to watch out for? Uh, I don't like, I mean, if you couldn't tell, Kathy, I am a people person and I love to chat. And when you have your product sitting on a shelf, they do not talk back to you. They don't interact with you. <sighs> I couldn't stand that I wasn't serving a person, that I was serving a piece of sterling silver. So mm -hmm. I also am somebody who knows nothing about jewelry and kind of went into an industry and realized after the fact. Yeah, I see all that you're wearing right now. I mean, it's all <laughs> fake crap. So I, I really should not have done that. But I, it's been sort of also, and I've been very lucky in this regard, with my second and my third businesses, I sort of launched them, not really planning ahead, not thinking much about it, just, oh, let's see mm -hmm. if this works. It'll probably fail. And then they took off and then I went, oh, mm -hmm. wait a second, I don't love this. Yeah. <laughs> so, although I do love what I do where I serve mom entrepreneurs now. So I really am a service-based yeah. business person, not a product-based business mm -hmm. person. Yeah. Um, I did a little bit of product stuff. It was not successful uh, before I started my um, virtual assistant business. And what I hated was inventory. Yes. Amen. Yeah. I may know it. Yeah. Not fun. Yeah. No. Um, I'm with you. I, I, I'm a people person also. I don't, I don't like to talk to, I was ridiculously um, making my own soap. And anybody who knows me now would just die laughing because I don't like to, I'm not craftsy at all. Mm, okay. So why I ever got into that, I'm still like, what was I thinking? Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I know that I learned a ton from every business Same. that I tried. How about you? Same. Totally. And I don't regret it for yeah. a minute. And in fact, right. I think it's what led me to do what I do now. And I offer so much advice and coaching and consulting about product and service-based businesses. And I'm able to do that because mm -hmm. of that uh, period. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And the mistakes that we make, we always learn from those, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't ever make any mistakes, you're not learning as fast as those of us who've made mistakes. Mm, I think everybody <laughs> makes mistakes. I just don't think everybody acknowledges that they're mistakes. Oh, that's yeah. what it is. I yeah. totally agree with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How, can you, <laughs> How can you not? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what advice would you give now that you have gotten a lot of advice and you have become the expert on how to be both a mom and an entrepreneur, a mom and a business owner, mm -hmm. what tips can you share with people on how to do all of that at the same time? Mm. I mean, it's always a tough question to answer because everybody's different, but the two 
general things I've noticed with mom entrepreneurs specifically across the board, meaning all ages, once they've had a kiddo, uh, all countries, all time zones, they, there are two things every woman carries. One of them is fear of failure because there's a lot more mm -hmm. on her plate and there's a lot more at stake. So she's really scared she's gonna let her family down. She's really scared she's gonna let her kids down, her partner, uh, everyone. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of fear to sort of let go and give up carrying around. And then the other piece of it that, I'll be frank, I don't know if I've even fully gotten rid of it, uh, is guilt. Guilt that you are oh, yeah. prioritizing yourself or your business and you're not mm -hmm. helicoptering over your kids all day every day and you're not paying attention, quote unquote, to the mm -hmm. important things which are <laughs> supposed to be not you which I find to be mm -hmm. garbage at this point, but I began mm -hmm. that way in biz, feeling so guilty that I was doing anything for myself. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've come a long way since then. And I think a lot of our members who've been with us for a long time have also sort of, um, you know, evolved away from that thinking and carrying that as well. But those honestly are the two things I see w with members we have in Mexico and in Norway and in uh, Austin, Texas and San Francisco and New York. Everybody's the mm -hmm. same about it all. So no mm -hmm. matter where you are, if you have kids and you have a business, these are the biggest blocks, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, the name of this podcast is Dare to Leap. Mm -hmm. The reason I called it that is because I find that that is where the biggest fear lies is making that leap into your own business into an entrepreneur type of business into something new mm. so what tips do you have for people who are like i really really want this but i well i love it because you could dare to leap into it's for me when i heard the name of your podcast i thought it's so brilliant because there's always an unknown. I mean, even if you don't run a business, there's always an unknown. You have to leap into it. And if you dare to leap, you're going to feel amazing afterwards. But I think I used to say to folks, well, let's just steal from the Nike slogan. You know, just do it. Just go ahead and do it. And a lot right. of people would say, I would love to. And intellectually, that makes sense. But, but I can't. Uh, and so I think the thing I've noticed, and I have drunk the Kool-Aid a little bit, the thing I've noticed that's worked the best is if you find a community of some kind where you can yes. find emotional support, literal physical support, uh, other women as examples of what you can go do and the fact that they might have failed but picked themselves up or the fact that they dared to leap into the industry you want to leap into, all, all has been so helpful that I'm ashamed that I spent the first five years of my business life without a community because boy did I reinvent the wheel about 5,000 times. And had I known to go out and meet people and talk to them and not be so opposed to welcoming other viewpoints and other people into my life, man, mm -hmm. I would I'd probably be a billionaire by now. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's so interesting that you did that because quite honestly, I did the same thing. When I started my business, I basically became a hermit for five years. I did not yes. reach out to others at all. And what do you think people? that's all about? What is I that all about? I think that you and I are not the only ones, but I, I think know. that a lot of it is that fear and that guilt that I was talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of it is uh, control. I don't want to tell anybody what I'm doing. I don't want to ask for help because it's admitting that I don't know anything. It's admitting mm -hmm. that I need help. How dare, you know, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. So I think we do a lot of mind tricks about thinking that well, I got this. I can do it. I can manage 49 departments of my own business by myself. Sure. Right. That's healthy and reasonable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> I know another thing I was thinking, because as you're talking about that, I'm thinking, what was I thinking when I did that? Because looking back, I'm like, that was really not at all something smart to do. Why did I do that? Because no. Jill, you're obviously a very intelligent person. I know I might seem like the craziest woman in the world and I am, but in my own crazy way, I'm also intelligent. Um, and, you know, thinking back, I really just thought all I have to do is work really, really hard. Yes. 
and and I will make this happen. Why? And what I, you know, that work hard. I think as women, we always think we have to work hard. Have yeah. you ever thought about that or had anybody else say that to you? And if so, what's your, oh. Oh, uh, yeah. what's your thought on that? I mean, I used to literally have a standing desk where I'd work 18 hours a day and thought, well, the harder I work, the better, the more profitable this will be, the more successful it'll be. Yes. And it's so funny to say, of course, hindsight 2020, that it's the dumbest thought in the world. But I think, mm -hmm. I'm still thinking about what you asked before, a reason that people don't go out and seek community. I think community has a bad name because I think, uh, I know that I used to assume, first of all, everybody who's in a community I'm not in, they all already know what they're doing and I don't. So why would I join them? <laughs> but I also think yeah. I thought it was filled with those God awful networking women and men who walk uh, in, they hand their business card to you, they give you a sleazy sales pitch and you're supposed to leave the meeting and connect with everybody and never, ever have anything come mm -hmm. of it. So and I there definitely are those types of communities. Oh, but you, can, you, sure. you, you don't even have to attend to figure that out. You don't even have to attend one. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> you I don't. Just, just ask a couple of people that are in it what it's like, right? <laughs> I wanted to skip the time trying to figure that out and just focus on the hard work, the hard work. Let's keep yeah. going. And it uh, turns out that it's such a good investment of your time. And oh, if you yeah. need to join something money, it's just the, it makes a world of difference. But you and I can easily say that now because we know after the fact. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's mm -hmm. listening who's not there yet, take it mm -hmm. from people who know and who spend mm -hmm. years wasting time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So any tips on how to find a community or how to identify when you do see a community that it's the one that's going to be a good fit for you? I highly recommend immediately finding three to five communities and joining them. And you can do that really easily on Facebook or LinkedIn. You can search groups. Yep. Uh, right. Meetup.com still exists. Of course, they're having a bit of trouble because it's a, a little bit of a pandemic right now. So you can't go offline. But uh, right. there, are, there are an awful lot of places you can Google it. And then the reason mm -hmm. I say join three to five is because within 24 to 48 hours, you'll get the tone of the group and you'll know if it feels right in your gut. And you'll just go, oh, these are my people. Or who are these Looney Tunes I'm leaving? You know? Yeah. So yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, do you, in your community of moms, mom mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, do you offer something free for people to be able to experience you in your community or something low cost? We do. We do. So our tell members, us about it. I'm going to tell you all about it. If you go to foundingmoms.com, uh, you can get yourself a membership and it includes access to our offline founding exchanges, which are twice monthly masterminds where Right now we're doing them virtually because of this tiny pandemic I mentioned. Uh, and online, you would join our closed exclusive Facebook group for members. We have weekly Facebook Lives teaching things. We have monthly video courses that come out. We have a business coaching program. We have a virtual assistant program. We have so many freaking resources. I don't honestly remember all of them right now. <laughs> but uh, if you go there and you join, it's normally 50 bucks a month. Um, I'm going to, can I just say the code that yeah, you use? Please, it is, please, if you want to. And I'll also put it in the it show notes. Code, it's not just cool. like a day free, a week free. We give four weeks free. So you can not only cool. spend a month in the, the FMC, but you get two free meetings offline um, in your local area. The code is one, O-N-E, M-O for month free. So one M-O free is the code you enter at checkout. And then- And it doesn't matter if it's all capital, all lowercase or anything? Go for all lowercase, because I don't remember. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> try all lowercase first, and if that doesn't work, we'll try all uppercase. Correct. But- <laughs> it's, all, it's all lowercase, but I don't think it matters. Yeah. That I and we'll have that code. I'll, we'll test it to be sure. Okay. We'll have that, that code and a link to that site Thank in you. our show notes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, thank you for offering that for free. And yeah. the reason I brought that up, not only was to, you know, get you some uh, you. PR there, but to also uh, mention you shouldn't have to pay anything to get an experience like this to see mm -hmm. if you're going to be a good fit. 
Agreed. You should either very low cost or free to be able to experience it. And then you can decide if you want more yeah. um, before you, before you pay a lot to, to get more. Because mm -hmm. I know I want people to experience all this. And I'm, if you're not watching the video, I'm circling my head where I have my tiara on That's so beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah. before they decide right. if I'm the right fit for them. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, thank you for offering that. I really appreciate it. That's exciting. I'm going to go sign up myself. Sure, you must come sign up. We're all one M O free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Winnie. I love that you said one and then O M O N E. O N E. Cause I was like, Oh, is that a number one? No. Oh, any, I love it. Cool. Um, and I'm also thinking about changing the name of my podcast from dare to leap to dare to Kloof. I highly recommend <laughs> before you do that. Cause then you'll know <laughs> that it might not be for you. Yeah. Nah, I don't. As you, as you were talking about dare to leap, I'm like, Oh, I could change leap for Kloof. That would you be could. so funny. It would cool, but I don't. <laughs> It wouldn't have quite the same ring, not quite, quite the it. same ring. Yeah. yeah. So in, in your experience in working with all these mom entrepreneurs and um, those who um, are scared to mm -hmm. leap. Yeah. Um, do you see any reoccurring reasons why they're scared, scared, why they're fearful, why they can't seem to take that leap? Yeah. Even if it's, you know, because it, it, they could do a side hustle, they could do it part-time. Is there a difference between side hustle and part-time? To some people, yes. Okay. Yeah. It's <laughs> Can like, you tell I'm showing my age? No, it's just really funny that it's such a complicated <laughs> answer now. But, you know, if uh -huh. I don't work a solid 40-hour week in my home running an international business, some people call uh -huh. that part-time, even though I know I work full-time. Oh my gosh, you know you're I mean? kidding. So then if I did not know that hustle, some people assume side hustle means you're not making money yet. It's all, uh, I don't know who you ask. It just is a million. Oh, you know what? The other thing is side hustle would mean you have another job, wouldn't it? Correct. That implies you doing two things. Yeah. And yeah. part time, you don't need to have another job. Part time to, to me is about the hours, but it's a right. I ask, agree. If you're talking to corporate folks or not. It's a mess out there right. in that regard. And I don't right. think any right. of it matters. But to answer your question, I felt like you you are hip with it enough because you use a lot of abbreviated words. Oh yeah, and like Where merch, else? RN. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I no, thought, I'm oh, just, she's, okay. and it is is hip even a right a, a cool okay. word anymore? Is no, cool even a cool word anymore? The uh, videos <laughs> that my children watch and they teach me everything, but um, but I do. I think that oftentimes people will not dare to leap. I mean, the fear is involved, the guilt is involved, but I think a lot of it actually, from my, my members, what I've heard from them, mm -hmm. stuff stems from having grown up in a family or a society where mm -hmm. you're constantly told you're not gonna make it. Or you're mm -hmm. literally told by your partner or your family, you're not gonna make mm -hmm. it. And so right. when you hear that and you convince yourself of that, I've known people to walk themselves through Excel spreadsheets of financials through business plans they've written up and mm -hmm. right before launch have decided it could never work. So I'm going to go the other way. Oh my gosh. And it's oh. very frustrating for those of us who don't do too much planning and just dive in. <laughs> uh, I don't really, so I don't really relate to it as much as I understand from them, but I think a lot of this is ingrained for many, many years. And then of course there mm -hmm. is just, uh, hearing about a lot of success stories like the lady who launched Spanx and thinking it's such an outlier how can I ever get there and if that's right. the goal sure talk yourself out of it but that shouldn't be the goal mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. yeah like that idea is already taken there's nothing else right right well, yeah I so uh, successful like her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so one of the things that I hear a lot, and I would love to hear if you hear this too, or in your opinion on how to overcome this, um, is I don't want to start over. You mean start over like a new biz? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. that, exactly. Like I'll be talking to somebody who is in the corporate world and they're like, yeah, I really hate my job. I'm, it's a, mm -hmm. I have nowhere to go. 
there's no promotional opportunities. You know, I'm getting a 2% raise every year if I'm lucky. Yeah. I drag myself to work every day. And then when it comes to daring to leave, they're like, really don't want to start over. Well, they're in the blows my mind. They're in the yes. locked in, stable paycheck, uh, no control over my own fantasy. Life. Yeah. Well, it's a I, fantasy, I believe. Just to bring it back to community, I think a lot of those people are surrounded by other people also naysaying the whole idea of, mm -hmm. well, if you go off and do your own thing, you'll never have this lifestyle. So right. let me pull it right out from under you in terms of succeeding and, you know, get rid of that thought. Mm -hmm. uh, and then mm -hmm. I, we have found a lot of, I don't know what we should call them, corporate flippers <laughs> who join the <laughs> because they were in corporate. In fact, we have a member who's 72 years old and joined us after attempting or sort of faux joining a lot of other women's business groups. She comes from yes. corporate. She joined a lot of corporate women's business groups. And then when she found us, she did this huge sigh of relief and went, wait a second, business doesn't have to be boring. Like I can just have fun with this and launch my own thing and see where it goes. She's one of our uh, biggest supporters. She loves everything we put out because she, the way she talks about it, no one presented to her the idea that it could go the way that it's going for her now. So I think oh, wow. such entrepreneurship is such a different mentality and way of mm -hmm. working than it is in corporate that I think mm -hmm. people in corporate can't even imagine what it's like in the entrepreneurship world, how rough and tough and challenging it is like in corporate, but without all of the barriers that you meet, all of those bosses stopping you from flourishing it's so much better right. over here, everyone. It's so much better. <laughs> so much. Yeah, Jill, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Because I, you don't know this, but I came from corporate almost oh. 20 years at a Fortune 500 company. Mm -hmm. I was golden. Uh, handcuff. Handcuff. Handcuff, thank you. In really good. And then they told me I laughed and smiled too much and I was never going to be promoted. What? Mm-hmm. Stop it. Oh. Yeah. And I was 40 and everybody said, you can't leave here. You only have 15 years to retirement. You can't leave here. You'll never make this kind of money. Only? You can't leave. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And even when I took my letter of resignation into the boss who had told me I laughed and smiled too much, he said, um, there's the biggest mistake you're ever going to make in your life. You will never make this kind of money again. Yeah. And I vowed to myself right then, oh, just watch me. I will double this. That's what I thought. I will double this. And I think that's part of the reason I put my head down for five years because I was like, I'm doubling that, you know. Yeah. And then once I doubled it, I'm like, now I'm going to triple it. Now I'm going to quadruple it. And then when I came up for air, I was like, what have I been doing? I recreated a job for myself. Yeah. This isn't what I wanted to do. And that's when I started making decisions based on, am I going to have fun? doing it? Am I going to feel fulfilled doing yes. it? Yes. I mean, that's the best way to go, but that doesn't sound safe to somebody who's sitting in corporate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good right. for you. Yeah. It was just on a um, virtual event with um, a lot of lawyers. You'll be able to relate to this. Right. And, you know, I was my normal self. I had my tiara on and all that. And they were all in suits in, um, in, the, the conversation we were supposed to have in the group was um, how do you feel about having fun? And, you know, I of course said, well, I love it. I do it all the time. And most of them said something like um, when it's a, there is a time and a place when it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Whoa, I'm so glad I don't work with you. Cause for me, the time and the place is whenever I feel like it. Yeah. And I told him, uh, just like I told you, I said, uh, and I had a really crazy tiara on, like, you might think this is crazy. This is my, this is my fancy tiara. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, I had a blow up one because it was supposed to be, we're supposed to be at a pool party. So mm -hmm. I wore a blow up, wore, wore a blow up tiara so I could get in the pool is what I told them. And they were all like, uh, there'd be a time and a place for that. And I said, I have a fancy tiara. And not nobody said anything. No, nobody laughed. So I was like, yeah, this isn't the community for me. I'll be moving on from this one. So that's a good example. Yeah. Community. Yeah. The other thing that I hear from people and see if you hear this one um, and women, 
when I say people, I'm really talking about moms, women, grandmas, aunts, um, is my husband believes I can do it by myself. My husband says I can do it by myself. I right. don't need anybody else's help. I don't need anybody to teach me. I don't need a community. Have you ever heard that one? No. I mean, I'm, I'm desperate to know why he believes that, why he thinks that. Is that his experience? Well, I will tell you, my very own husband told me that in the beginning when I wanted to hire my first coach. And he said, why do you need that? You're smart. You don't need that. And I said, yeah, I do because I've gotten as far as I can go on my own and I have big aspirations mm -hmm. and I want to hire a coach who has already been where I want to go so that I can get there faster and easier. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, that seems like a waste of money to me. And I said, well, um, I'm going to do it <laughs> and then we'll see. <laughs> so I did. And oh my gosh, best money I ever spent. I will never be without a coach again. Oh, for sure. Well, I, I think I liken that scenario to what we all often hear from folks. And this might be you, Kathy, people who don't really believe in or understand or think that therapy would be helpful. And so they exactly. Of, well, I can just process my feelings on my own and I'm just going to mm -hmm. you know, be sad, happy, whatever I need to be. And I, why would I need someone else around? And until they understand the mm -hmm. concept of needing the backboard so that you, mm -hmm. you, you can't actually process anything alone. You're feeling right. this concepts. You need a backboard to echo back to you what you're literally thinking and saying so you can tweak it, so you can hone it, so you can improve it. Uh, and it's, mm -hmm. it's to me, once you have, it's like a religion, I guess. Once you've accepted that that is the way that we function as human beings, um, I think people then dare to leap into, oh, wait, I'm going to mm -hmm. reach out for help and not just sit here and do this all by myself. Because that to me is all ego talking. That's just, um, that to me is you're very out of touch with how business is actually done, right? Because mm -hmm. there's a reason that there are presidents and boards and all kinds of people at the top level of companies. You need people to check mm -hmm. in with other people. That's why the government's set up the way the government's set up. We can't do anything without each other. So, um, good again, point. You and I are saying that we're like preaching to the choir with each other because we both came from a <laughs> doing this on our own, uh, and we both know so well now how much it hurt our, our progress. I think. Uh huh. You know? Uh huh. Yeah. Well, what type of women um, typically uh, join your program? And I'm assuming there's going to be a wide range, but give me an idea. Very of, wide uh, range in terms of type of business. I do think we have mm -hmm. majority service-based businesses because a lot of the retail folks are in the stores all day and don't have time for accessing our stuff at the speed that you know mm -hmm. they would want to. Um, mm -hmm. But we tend to run and a little bit older than you would think. A lot of people hear the founding moms and they think that we're all youngins carrying infants. Uh, but we're pretty much 35 years old to 72, as I had said before. Mm -hmm. Did I say 72? I think mm -hmm. so. Yes, uh, you did. And we're usually not comprised of women who are thinking about launching. We usually, you're in your first one to 10 years of business. You really want to get Oh, better. okay. Interesting. Yeah. You want to get really good at marketing, branding, sales. And that's not to say... We have members who are thinking of ideas and hang around for 10 months mm -hmm. and then launch. Uh, that's just mm -hmm. not the majority of our members. The majority are right. good at doing what they do, but they really need to mm -hmm. bump up their marketing game or they need to get better at branding. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They join us. Good. I like that. Yeah. So marketing, branding, those are two biggies sales. that you help with. Sales. sales. Okay. Yeah. So if you're looking marketing, for branding, and sales. Yeah, well, here and there, we have lawyers who are members who can give you some advice. We have accountants who definitely comment often about advice for us, but mm -hmm. if you're looking for big only accounting financial, you know, stuff. Mm -hmm. That's not, mm -hmm. that, we're not for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, in legal and um, accounting advice, you can't give legally without uh, them actually working. Right with you so yes. that's a believe me i know that that's a big reason why uh lawyers and accountants don't give that advice freely because they can't uh, yeah they can share some insights and mm -hmm. give some broad information but for your specific business you do want to have your own 
uh, accountant, your own CPA, your own bookkeeper, whoever oh, that yeah. is. Do you agree? Oh, yes, I do. I yeah. didn't used to, but came around. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not a numbers girl, but I'm learning to like them because you, you can make some really bad decisions without knowing your numbers. You and me both. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, we're, we're, we're sisters from another mister, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, all I can say is it would really look good on you if you had one. Thanks. <laughs> Next Zoom upgrade, they hand things through the screen. So you just give it to <gasps> Won't that be awesome? Be so yeah. I would like that a lot better than smell a Zoom. Smell a Zoom. Ew. What? Who has yeah, I don't want to smell it. I don't want to smell it. Oh. Yeah. So Jill, are you easily, because you, you're going with me every time I bounce to a shiny object, which I love. <laughs> so <laughs> why not? Is that distracting for you? Or are you like, oh, this is fun. Uh, this is playtime. No, I love it. No, I yeah, actually right. I didn't even notice. Hey, sisters from another mister. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can tell you that other people, they're not so fond of it when I do that. <laughs> they just kind of wait for me to finish wherever I've gone. Mm -hmm. Then it, then I come back, which is yeah. fine too. Yeah. Right. Don't but like it's fun it. to be with you because you're like, let's bounce around. Yeah. Where are we going now? More fun. More fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, in wrapping up two things, one, I want to hear what your life is like on a daily basis. Okay. So your typical business life. And then I want to wrap up with you telling us um, how people can, if there's a way other than what you've already shared, or you can share it again, how people can find out more about you and, and what you have going on. Sure. So tell us a little well, bit about what it's like to be you. Mm -hmm. What's your day like? What's and how day? old are your children now? I have a 13 year old daughter. She's 13 now. Uh, I have a 10 year old daughter and then I have a 14 year old stepson and a six year old stepson. Uh, uh, so it's a little bit of the brain over here. Yeah. And yes. uh, I do love talking about my schedule because it's morphed so much over the years where I used to, again, work 18 hours at a standing desk every day and not move. Mm -hmm. um, just mm -hmm. bathroom breaks. I, uh, I realized, wait a second. I'm the boss, I'm in charge of my calendar. And so I started rearranging everything. And so I now, um, particularly right now, we're talking at a time where the pandemic has hit, Chicago has all schools going remote. So I've, I've just recently rejiggered my schedule. Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I only work a couple hours in the evening because I like to be around for my girls uh, who need a lot of help with school and the boys. and. And then Thursdays and Fridays are my gung ho, let's do this. And then on busy weeks, which are most weeks, I work a little bit through the weekend too. So I kind of take off, quote unquote, Mondays through Wednesdays for the kiddos. Um, and it's, it ends up sounding like I'm not working very much during the week. But in fact, my email program uh, enables me to schedule email. So I look like I'm working all week long. Uh, I, I'm very systematized in my business now. So I do a lot in advance and schedule a lot out. So I look like I'm around 24 seven. Um, so that's, there's not really a day in the life. There's no, every day is an adventure. Um, I love that. And, and that's exactly what I wanted to hear was oh, what good. was your real life like? Yeah, yeah it, because that's part of what the corporate people don't get, right? Is that you really can, when we say you can make your own schedule, we don't mean you can choose, yeah, I'm going to have Monday off and then I'll work nine to five the rest of the week. No, you literally can choose whatever you want. Well, I think a lot so of that's awesome. begin that way as well, because they want to look like they're real business people, but they don't realize the internet. We're in 2020. You can do a lot and not right. be here. Um, right. And be kind to yourself and actually take time off every week. Yes. Uh, yes. And then if folks want to find me, foundingmom.com, yeah. or you can just Google Jill Salzman. I'm everywhere. I'm at founding mom on pretty much almost every single social media handle. Uh, but come to foundingmoms.com, join us, and use code one mo free O N E M O F R E E when you check out, and you won't be charged for four weeks, so you can try everything out. Woohoo! It's going to be a party. Yes. That's it is. awesome. It is. Thank awesome. you for letting me share that. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Jill, I'm telling you, I could talk to you for another two hours because you <laughs> just, you, uh, could I, could I come and stay with you and could you, you be totally my new best could. friend? Come to Chicago <laughs> after the pandemic's over. We'll have you, we'll hang out. Yeah. <laughs> NTRS. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, you, you know, you're, I'm going to have to get, bring some tiaras for your daughters too. Yes, please. Absolutely. Yeah. And the boys. Yeah. The boys. Hey, I agree. All this we have a couple of, um, mm -hmm. I have a couple of men in my program. Now you don't allow men at all, or do you allow men in your program? Not that we don't allow them. They just don't show up. <laughs> they just don't. Okay. Well, I mean, with the word moms, I would think not, but yeah, you yeah, never yeah. know. This very true, but we just haven't had yeah. that experience yet. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, we're all inclusive. Um, but uh, out of hundreds, I have five guys. So we don't, when we do giveaways, we do tiaras. Yeah. Um, and everybody's like, well, what about men? And I'm like, if they don't like it, they don't have to wear it. But yeah. I'm not giving them something special. Mm -hmm. uh, how many, you know, times in our lives have the men, you know, made exceptions for the women? Not. Right. It's right. our turn. Yeah. <laughs> So, and, and it's our turn in a lot of ways, I feel, as women today. And I'm really excited about that. How about you? Ditto. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. exciting. Time. Well, Jill, thank you so much for spending this time with me. Pleasure. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And I look forward to jumping in, getting to, getting to experience your community and see what you have going on. Founding moms, we'd love to have you. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.